On September 27, 1986, an event unfolded that would resonate throughout the annals of music history, albeit not in the manner anyone had predicted. Metallica, the renowned heavy metal band, had released their groundbreaking album Master of Puppets. Six months prior, basking in the glow of newfound stardom. Taking the stage at the Solar Holland Arena in Stockholm, Sweden, were the iconic lineup James Hetfield on vocals and rhythm guitar, Lars Ulrich on drums, Kirk Hammett on lead guitar, and Cliff Burton on bass guitar. Their performance was electrifying, fueled by iconic hits like Master of Puppets and The Thing That Should Not Be Fresh from an American tour alongside Ozzy Osbourne and embarking on their European leg, Metallica was ascending to unprecedented levels of fame. Yet, unbeknownst to them, a sinister twist of fate loomed in the shadows. Little did they realize this would mark the final time the band would share the stage with one of metal's preeminent bassists, Cliff Burton. Following the release of Master of Puppets on March 3, 1986, Metallica embarked on an extensive tour known as the Damage Inc. Tour, traversing the globe from March to August. Opening for Ozzy Osbourne across the United States, they played to packed arenas, unaware of the tragedy that awaited them. For the first time, audiences witnessed Metallica's burgeoning success, and by summer, Master of Puppets had exceeded 500,000 copies sold, earning the band their inaugural gold record and securing a spot in the US Top 30. In September of that year, the European leg of their tour commenced, seemingly unstoppable. At the third European show on September 27, 1986, at Solar Holland in Stockholm, the band delivered yet another stellar performance, with bassist Cliff Burton surprising the crowd with a unique rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Alongside his customary bass solo, energetically moving around the stage. Following this remarkable display, the band eagerly boarded their tour bus for an overnight journey to Copenhagen for the next day's show. In the cramped confines of the bus, Kirk and Cliff decided to draw cards to determine who would get the more comfortable window bunk. Cliff, drawing the ace of spades, claimed the lucky spot. Later that night, as James sipped vodka and Cliff indulged in some marijuana, the two settled into their adjacent bunks at the back of the bus, drifting off to sleep. Suddenly at 6.15 a.m., the bus veered off the road, jolting its sleeping occupants with violent swaying akin to a runaway roller coaster. The unexpected and intense motion flung band members around like pinballs, culminating in the bus overturning and coming to a rest on its side. Amidst the cacophony of crashing bodies and shattered furnishings, Screams pierced the chaos as the band struggled to escape the overturned bus in the dim dawn light. Frantically calling out each other's names to ensure everyone's safety, they gradually confirmed that everyone was physically unharmed, except for their bassist, Cliff Burton. Guitarist Kirk Hammett recounted the horrifying moment when he realized something was amiss upon hearing the absence of Cliff's voice amidst the chaos. Tragically, Cliff was found beneath the bus, and in that devastating moment, the band's world shattered, devoid of any safety restraints on their bunks. Cliff was violently propelled through a bus window, which then collapsed on him. Despite the band's desperate hope for his rescue, a crane called to lift the bus failed, causing it to crash down on Cliff once more. Conflicting reports exist regarding whether Cliff perished upon the initial impact or when the bus fell again. Regardless, the talented musician met a tragic end at the age of 24. An autopsy later revealed that his death resulted from chest compression and a pulmonary contusion caused by the immense weight and force of the bus. This injury inflicted excruciating pain and impaired his ability to breathe, ultimately leading to him to his untimely passing. The bus driver attributed the accident to black ice, but Metallica members doubted this explanation. James Hetfield even searched for evidence of black ice, finding none. Upon seeing the driver cover Cliff with a blanket, James grew incensed, suspecting the driver's culpability. Despite his anger, James refrained from violence, albeit with difficulty. 
Allegations of alcohol consumption by the driver circulated, although no concrete proof emerged. In the aftermath, Metallica's drummer, Lars Ulrich, suffered a broken toe while the band grappled with their grief by turning to alcohol. They drank heavily, attempting to numb the shock of witnessing their friend's tragic demise. Reflecting on those dark days, Lars admitted their inability to process the tragedy, resorting instead to alcohol as a coping mechanism. James, heavily sedated by hospital staff, continued drinking, struggling to find solace. Kirk recalled hearing James, in a drunken stupor, desperately calling out for Cliff in the early hours, a heartbreaking moment that left him in tears. After several days of heavy drinking, the band's manager urged them to channel their emotions into their music, encouraging them to confront their grief head on. Initially resistant, the band struggled to comprehend the notion of moving forward without their friend. It took them some time to embrace the idea of resilience, eventually honoring Cliff's memory by heeding his own words to battle on. Meanwhile, investigations at the crash site concluded, with a local photographer dismissing the possibility of black ice due to the dry road conditions and mild temperature. Police corroborated this, noting the absence of ice at the scene and suggesting that the tire tracks resembled those left by drowsy drivers. Although the driver testified that he was well rested, suspicions lingered about the circumstances leading to the accident. Despite ongoing speculation about alcohol, drugs or fatigue, investigations ultimately absolved the driver of wrongdoing. Following legal proceedings, the driver was released from arrest but barred from driving until the investigation concluded. Subsequently, the public prosecutor lifted travel restrictions, allowing him to return home. Despite the tragedy, Metallica resolved to avoid tour buses, haunted by the memory of the accident. Guitarist Kirk Hammett, in particular, couldn't shake the feeling of survivor's guilt, reflecting on how he narrowly avoided the same fate as Cliff. Nevertheless, Metallica made a remarkable comeback to the stage just 43 days after the accident, performing a secret special guest for Metal Church. Despite the loss, the band pressed forward, eventually welcoming bassist Jason Newsted into the fold. While Cliff Burton's time with Metallica was brief, his memory and musical contributions endure. Many devoted Metallica fans regard the period when Cliff Burton served as their bass player as the band's golden era, coinciding with their rise to thrash metal supremacy worldwide from 1982 until his untimely passing in 1986. Cliff played a pivotal role in shaping Metallica's legacy, contributing his genius to their first three albums, Kill Em All Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets, born on February 10, 1962. In San Francisco amidst the hippie movement, Cliff's musical journey began at young age. After losing his brother Scott to a brain aneurysm at 13, Cliff embraced music as a means of honoring his memory, determined to become the best bassist he could be. At 14, Cliff joined his first band, Easy Street, where he transitioned from piano to bass guitar, quickly surpassing his teacher in skill. He sought further instruction from jazz bassist Steve Doherty, expanding his musical horizons and refining his playing style. By age 20, Cliff had earned a reputation as one of California's finest metal musicians, catching the attention of Metallica founders James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich during a performance at the Whiskey A Go Go in Los Angeles. Impressed by Cliff's virtuosity and innovative approach to bass playing, they recruited him as Metallica's new bassist in 1982. Cliff's debut with Metallica marked an instant success as he brought not only exceptional musical prowess, but also a unique ability to compose melodies in his head and transcribe them flawlessly. His contributions went beyond keeping a steady beat. He redefined the role of the bass guitar in thrash metal, incorporating distortion techniques to create a prominent presence in Metallica's sound. Despite his promising ascent, fate dealt Cliff a cruel hand, cutting short his life tragically. Despite the brevity of his time with us, Cliff's impact on music, his pioneering spirit in reshaping the role of the bass guitar in metal, and his enduring legacy within Metallica's iconic sound endure. Inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame posthumously in 2009 alongside his Metallica bandmates,
Cliff continues to be celebrated as one of the greatest bassists of all time. As we honor Cliff Burton, we are reminded that his spirit lives on through his music and the hearts of countless fans worldwide. <laughs>